Here we are on the <clears throat> Fremont Bridge. It's on Interstate 405 in Portland, Oregon, and uh, this spans over the Willamette River. I don't think you would find anybody that would advocate uh, putting about six or eight inches of asphalt paving over this bridge deck and, and would expect this bridge to carry that kind of extra loading. We have cases uh, over the years where we've actually done that to bridges, uh, paved, overpaved, overpaved, and uh, ask our old bridges to carry a tremendous loading. And what we're looking at here is um, some of the typical flaws that you see in, in uh, roadway pavements, uh, AC pavements. Here's uh, plating out and some utility cut damage and um, longitudinal cracking and alligator cracking and all of these are brought on basically by uh, too much load and too much water and the hydraulic ram effect that water can have under loading and uh, over the years we end up with these kinds of uh, failures and here's a classic example of um, paving patch upon patch upon patch and you end up without uh, curb exposure. Here we're looking at maybe two inches of curb reveal left. Water uh, splashes on the pedestrians on the sidewalks. Uh, there's much crown buildup that high container trucks would hit the telephone poles along the sides. There comes a time when you can't add any more and you actually need to start removing some of that, reshape your road, and um, uh, repave. And what we found here in the Portland area over the years is uh, an excellent tool for this is the large coal planer. We use that for removal of AC and also what we term inlay patching. Here's a typical flaw that you encounter. It's uh, uh, longitudinal cracking and alligator cracking. You could use the large planer in an area like this to remove that down maybe three to four inches, use some paving fabric and pave it back to match the surrounding road area that wasn't flawed. You aren't adding additional mix to, to reduce your curb reveal or increase your crown, so your uh, water will run off as it was designed to do. You can come in on a road like this and, and uh, you see how the flaw is localized in one line. Uh, you could remove all of your uh, AC out of that one lane and then uh, take your small coal planer and deal with just the flawed area and actually rebase that. Uh, you could cut it further on down, maybe six, eight inches, and uh, rebase that using your grinding material and then pave back your inlay to match your surrounding lanes. Here's a classic example of an area where a small coal planer would uh, fit in, uh, maybe a three-foot wide cut outside of that old underlying concrete pavement. Here where we have this edge cracking, uh, that's an area where the water can get into the area. And uh, since this is a narrow old underlying concrete pavement, the trucks, uh, heavy loads actually run off of that concrete and start breaking down that uh, shoulder area. This is some uh, longitudinal cracking uh, indication of, uh, of possibly a base problem or a differential of materials. It kind of tends to look like it may be, uh, could be involved with the utility cut too. There's a, a manhole and uh, utilities, if we didn't have any in any of our highways, I think we'd be better off structurally, but that isn't reality, and we have to deal with those. It's really important to get the utility companies to do a good quality job when they work on the highways, but you can't always have people out there watching that activity either, so 
many times we're left with dealing with the uh, utility cuts after the fact and go in and make the repairs. This, this is a good uh, example of a utility installation where they've done a good quality job. Here we're, uh, we're into uh, an inlay uh, patch. Uh, the AC, the old AC is being removed uh, not because we have a structural problem, we don't. It's a, uh, an erosion problem that's taking place is creating some fairly severe raveling and rutting of the road. So we'll mill out this uh, lane uh, about 11 foot wide. This particular uh, coal planer is a, a Dynapack uh, front conveyor uh, six and a half foot wide so you'll make two partial passes there to remove the lane. They're milling down about two inches and then they'll pay that back. Uh, won't be necessary to use any fabric because we don't have a structural problem. You note the uh, front convey uh, is especially important on a high volume road uh, so that you can keep all of your operation in line. If this were a rear convey, as some of the coal planers are, that driver of that truck would be backing up to the coal planer that would be pulling away from him and so you're dependent on a uh, somebody to load the truck and motion them forward all the time or backwards all the time it works a lot better with the front convey and <clears throat> the truck moving ahead and then he's lined up with traffic uh, in the normal flow direction. This particular coal planer, this Dynapack, at the present time is, uh, we think, is kind of the state of the art. It's, uh, it's a good heavy machine that has uh, got plenty of horsepower and does a good job, holds good grade. Just an all around excellent machine. Whoever uh, invents a, a good, durable sweeper will have their fortune made. Uh, I don't think there's any such thing on the market right now. Uh, sweeping these millings is extremely hard on a sweeper. They tend to pack in all kinds of little recesses in the sweeper, and uh, this causes them to break. This shows the uh, area after it's cleaned up, the cut area, and uh, it's important to, if you can, to plane through your lift so that you don't have a, a thin partial lift left there that is debonded and will, you, you want good adhesion with your new mix. You can see the old uh, highway stripe in that particular picture there. Now here they're tacking the, the edges of the cut, and that's important to get a good bond there. And that edge is, is roughened uh, by this coal planer, uh, so it makes a good vertical bond with your AC also. Now they'll use the hand wand here, and then they'll uh, shoot the center of that with the distributor. This is a emulsified asphalt tack, as CSS-1 in this case. Uh, we found that it's a little more compatible with uh, some of the loose crumbs or dust that's left in the cut, and we found it isn't really all that important to clean it like a houndstooth, to just get it fairly clean, and then the CSS is liquid enough that it'll flow in amongst this stuff and create a good tack. Now the distributor is uh, shooting the main part of it.
You see that uh, when this is paved back, it's going to match the lanes either side. So it isn't necessary to do any feathering out over those areas and use that additional mix that you don't really need. And it also leaves the cross section of the road intact uh, where the water will run across like you want it to. And super sections, uh, that's particularly important that you aren't reducing the amount of super um, on a roadway. You can hold the design. Now here we're using a, a paving machine to pave this back. It's uh, adjusted to the width of the cut. This is a little self-propelled uh, paving machine that uh, we rent. Uh, Squaring up the edge of the panel, that, that's important. Um, the cuts should, uh, the payback should look neat. And if you have ruts, uh, you need to uh, rake a transition into that patch uh, so that you don't bump up onto a nice level patch from a rutted uh, road. You get a lot of criticism from people if they bump up and off of these patches. Now here you can see a kind of a uh, side view uh, shows how they're allowing for the compaction, actually leaving the, the loose AC a little high so that when you get your compactor on there, it's going to push it down to match the surrounding roadway. After, uh, oh, in a year's time or less, uh, you'll start seeing a, a crack open up along these inlay patches, and so it's important that prior to that time, uh, you get in there and seal those edges with uh, some kind of a flexible crack sealer. We use a rubber asphalt crack sealing material. Now here the roller is uh, pinching that edge. He's starting at the outside edge. He'll do both sides of that panel and then he'll uh, start in towards the middle. This is especially uh, important. Um, it should always be done this way to, to pinch that material against the existing pavement edge. <clears throat> On the low side of a super, um, if you're making a cut on a supered section, you want to start your compaction on the low side of that. Otherwise, you'll push a wave out and you'll have a ridge out there at that low side. This particular uh, compactor is, uh, it's a uh, vibrating steel on the front and uh, pneumatic on the back, and it just does an excellent job of compaction. We've run some density tests on it uh, with a nuke and it generally it on a two inch lift like this where you don't have a yielding surf under surface uh, two passes and you're you've got your density this is the finished product and if you notice how it matches the surrounding area and a good good writing a good quality patch i appreciate the opportunity of talking to you about uh, inlay patching with the large coal planer <laughs>